So in problem 1627, we're asked to predict the product. So we'll look at parts A, B, C, and D. So keeping with our general strategy of solving these problems, let's first go ahead and identify what the major functional group is and the starting material. For problem A, we can see that the major functional group is going to be an aldehyde. We're treating that aldehyde with an amine. This is a primary amine in the presence of a catalytic amount of some acid. We're going to abbreviate that acid as HA. It can be a variety of different things, but it's solely there to serve as a proton transfer reagent. So we should recognize that the aldehyde in the presence of a primary amine is going to form an imine. So overall, if we look at what we've done, we've essentially lost the elements of water through that condensation reaction. So the two hydrogens from the amine and the oxygen from the carbonyl are lost as water in this reaction. In part B, we're starting with a ketone. And in this case, we're treating with a secondary amine. So this happens to be a cyclic amine. In this case, because the amine is secondary, we end up with an ene amine. There's our ene. And there's our amine. So this is an ene amine. The difference between the primary and secondary amines is the amine and the secondary amine only has one hydrogen. Both of these reactions produce water as a byproduct. So the second hydrogen is actually coming from a carbon. Part C is going to be similar to um, part A, we're starting with a ketone, and in that ketone is a primary amine. So whereas in part A we had an intermolecular process, now we have an intramolecular process, so everything's happening within one molecule. We draw our cyclic carbon backbone, this amine is then going to condense onto that carbonyl. And we end up with this fused ring system. So because we started with a primary amine, we end up with an imine. And finally, in part D, we're looking at some different reaction conditions. We're starting with a ketone. And we're treating that with this phosphorus illid. So these are commonly known as Wittig reagents. So that's going to react with the carbonyl to give you an alkene. So here's our alkene product. So notice that in all of these processes, we're essentially transforming the CO double bond into either CN, it is an imine, enamine, or in this case an alkene.